spend our time with Jesus. We will be on earth here. We will be in heaven. But wherever Jesus is, that's where we want to be. Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Praise the Lord. Those who are visiting with us today, we want to welcome you to Straight Gate Ministries. We are happy that you find yourself here with us today to worship the Lord. Um, in Straight Gate Ministries, we do verse by verse Bible exposition. And this morning, uh, we had the book of Genesis that we are presently studying. And right now, we are going to go into Luke. We are in the book of Luke. And we are in chapter 7 of the book of Luke. We study the Bible verse by verse, book by book, chapter by chapter. Praise the Lord. Amen. Try to rightly divide the word of God. Today we are going to pick up where we left off last week in Luke chapter 7. And we will just start out at verse 31. Of chapter 7. We bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here another time, even as we open up the Holy Word of God. We pray for clean hands and pure hearts. God, I pray that our sins will be forgiven. Lord, even as we open up your words, we pray that our hearts will become hungry for the Word of God. Lord, as I stand before your people, I pray for the mouth of the lawn, the ears of the lawn, the tongue of the lawn. The mouth of the lawn, so I could speak a word in season. Someone that is tired today, someone that is weary. Lord, the hands that is hanged down, the feeble knees, they'll receive strength today. God, I pray that someone that is sick, the word of God will bring healing, will, will bring strength. Oh, glory be to God. Those who might be on the verge of giving up, Lord, I pray that you'll rescue your people today by the power of your words. Have your weary pray. In Jesus' precious, wonderful name. Bless the Lord. Last week we ended on uh, verse 30 of um, John chapter 7 where it said, But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of John. And we, we stopped there last week where we explained that John preaching, the preaching of John, and the preaching of Jesus was rejected by the Pharisees and the lawyers. They did not receive it. And they think that they were rejecting the preaching of John. But in reality, they were rejecting the counsel of God. It was God himself who was speaking through John the Baptist and through the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's the same thing today when we reject the preaching of the word of God. It's not the preacher we are rejecting. We are rejecting the counsel of God. And not only that, but Jesus said that by rejecting the counsel of God, it turns or it comes back to you as a form of judgment. Rejecting the word of God, when we reject the word of God, the word, God's judgment is going to fall on whoever rejects God's counsel. So we, we pick up in verse 31. And the Lord said, you know, this is very powerful here to me. He said, the Lord said. And when you interpret the word, the Lord, you're talking about someone who have ownership. You're talking about Adonai, the master, the ruler. And what he said, the Lord said. And when we acknowledge Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, he is our ruler. He is our master. He is our owner. And when somebody is Lord, it means that they have the say over your life or they control what takes place in your life. And each of us need to ask ourselves the question, is Jesus your Lord? Does Jesus have final authority in your life? Some people said that Jesus is my Savior, but he's not my Lord. But Jesus can't be your Savior if he's not your Lord. They don't want Jesus to have authority over their lives, so they want him to save. In other words, they're using God. They're using him to get salvation, but they don't want him to dictate their life. They don't want him to tell them what to do in their life. But Jesus 
Christ is Lord. And as children, as his children, those who he, he have paid the price for by the shedding of his blood, he have total control over our lives. It tells us where, uh, where, where on to then. So the Lord said, Jesus is saying here. And the reason why he's saying this is because these people reject the counsel of God. So Jesus is making an analogy. He's making a comparison to who these people are like. He said, uh, the Lord said, where on to then shall I lighten the men of this generation? And to what are they like? They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace. What Jesus is doing here, those adult men and women who hear the preaching of John the Baptist, hear the preaching of the Lord Jesus Christ, and they reject the counsel of God, uh, Jesus is saying here that he's likening them unto children. What he's saying, it is childish. What they're doing is very childish. Rejecting God's messenger, rejecting the Son of God, rejecting the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is setting it here as being childish. He said, they are like unto children sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another and saying, we have piped unto you and you have not danced. We have mourned to you and you have not uh, wept. Uh, Sister Duncan, could you clean this again for me? <laughs> I can't see out of my, <laughs> my glasses. Amen. Thank you very much. So, what is happening here is that Jesus is making a comparison. You've got to do it fast. <laughs> Jesus is making a comparison. And what he's saying here is that these uh, people, they are like children. And uh, like children who play in the marketplace. In those days, they used to have a place where uh, during certain times of the week, certain days of the week, uh, they will gather together where they have the market where they will be selling different produce. And when the market is not in session, when there's nothing uh, to be sold in the market, the children will take over the area where the, the produce used to be sold and they'll be playing games. So what Jesus is saying here, this day, some of the children decide that they're going to play wedding. You remember when you was growing up, you go out and you will play different games with your uh, friends. So the children decide they're going to play wedding. They get somebody to be uh, the bride and the groom and they get someone to, uh, the people who will be the, uh, you know, the bridesmaid and stuff like that. Set everything up like a wedding and then they start a wedding song. And some of their friends said, no, 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 we don't want to play wedding we don't have any taste for wedding. Who want to play this foolish game? We don't want to play wedding. So they decide they're going to change it, and they decide they're going to play funeral. So I guess they get somebody <laughs> to be the funeral director. <laughs> they get people to be the mourners, because in those times, they used to have professional mourners who would be mourning. And I guess they get somebody to play the dead person, <laughs> be, the, <laughs> be the cop. <laughs> and, you know, they set things up. And then they start to sing a mournful song. And guess what the people said? No, we don't want to play. We don't want to play no um, funeral. And the message that Jesus is bringing here to us is that God don't know what to do with the children of Israel anymore. God reached to the point where it seemed as though the Lord is saying, I have done everything that I could do and still there's nothing that satisfies you, because I have sent uh, the forerunner, John the Baptist, the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you reject him, and I also send my only son, and you also reject him. What else can I do? You are acting childish. And we have to understand there's a difference between acting childlike and acting childish. You know, when a person is acting childlike, it means that you have the quality. You have, you have some of the good quality of a child. You know, I noticed uh, last few Sundays, uh, I don't know what was going on in the back there, but my granddaughter 
she disagree with something that happened in the back there. And one speed, she run from down there. And she run up crying. <laughs> Go by her mom. <laughs> and then before the, her tears dry up, she was, down back at, at, she was down at the back again. You know, that is, she is acting child-like. That is what, that is one of the good quality of a child. Even though she was upset with whoever she was upset with. Whoever said no to her at the back. She wasn't upset with them for a long period of time. She totally forget that. And we as adults, we need to be childlike. In other words, if you get upset, you get angry. Just like how children, when they get angry and they get upset, they don't stay angry forever. They make things up. They let bygone be bygone. They don't hold on to it. That's how we, we need to be. But when you talk about being childish, it means an adult is an adult who acting like a child. An adult who pick up uh, some, you know, childish um, characteristic of a child. And, you know, they're doing things as an adult that a child will do. Foolishness or silliness is when an adult person acting silly or you're acting foolishly. So what Jesus is saying here, we have to act like mature, grown men and women. What the Apostle Paul said, When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I was taught as a child, but when I become a man, I put away childishness. I remember when I was growing up, you know, back in St. Vincent, I used to love to go to uh, the, the park area and play cricket. You guys know what cricket is. But I like to go with my own bat. And I, I like to take my own ball. And the reason for that, when I go with my own bat and my own ball, sometimes I even have my own stumps. And when I put them up and I start to bat, it doesn't matter how much time you um, knock down the stump. You could knock down one stump. If I don't feel like coming out, I ain't coming out. You could knock down two of the stump because you know it's three stump. And if I don't feel like coming out, I ain't coming out. You could knock down the three stump. If I don't feel that it's a time for me to give up, if I'm not satisfied and I feel I don't have enough, I ain't giving up because why? The ball belongs to me, the bat belongs to me, and it's my stump. And if you don't want to agree with me, I'll take my stumps, take my bat, take my ball, and I go home. That is acting childish. And, you know, as children of God, we have to act like mature men and women. And, you know, we have this childish behavior. You know, even in our homes, you know, in our family, many times we have disagreement in our household. It's because one person is acting childish. You know, husband and wife have an argument. The husband gets upset. He's supposed to do certain thing in the home. Maybe it is his turn to take care of the, the kids. And he knows he's supposed to come home early to look after the kids. He will find some other thing to go and do. Maybe he might, you know, there's an argument and uh, he get upset with the wife and to get back at her, he know that they have a joint account and she have to go and take money out whenever she need money. And being childish, she will go and he take all of the money out and he put it in a separate account. And she can't get any money. That is acting childish. And, uh, you know, um, or the, the wife, maybe her husband gets get her upset. And she shut down the kitchen. You ladies know what I'm talking about. You're not, you stop cook. You're not cook anymore. You're not cooking. You're not washing. You're not doing nothing. You turn on all the pots. <laughs> that is acting, it's acting childish. And some ladies will take it a little bit further. They will shut down the bedroom too. <laughs> you shut down the bedroom and say, you're not getting nothing. <laughs> you know, that is acting childish. And... When we operate like that, when we behave in this kind of way, brethren, when we as adults operate in this, with this kind of childish behavior, it's not going to work in our advantage. advantage. We need to act like grown-up. You know, sometimes we bring it into the church, and, you know, things not going our way, and because things not going our way, we start to act childish. You know, things not going your way, 
You're not cooperating. You're not taking a part. You know, things not going the way how you want it to go. You stop, come to church. Or you come whenever you feel like. And then when you come, you're not putting, you're not showing no interest. It is what Jesus is calling here, acting childish. And what the word of God is saying here, that we have to grow up. Just like how Jesus is saying here that these people, they were adults, but they were acting like children. You know, we all have our moments when we act like children. You know, when you feel like you want to put your finger in your mouth. When is the last time you put your big finger in your mouth and just suck on it? <laughs> Sometimes, situation that you're going through, you just feel like you're all alone and you feel like nobody don't like you because somebody tells you something that is right and you just feel it is time for you to pull your finger out and put it in your mouth and suck on it. But brethren, we have to resist these things. We have to act grown up. We have to know that we are adult. God expects us to act like mature men and women, you know, because we are called by his name. So this is what Jesus was saying, that um, these children play the wedding song. Nobody want to play wedding. They play the funeral song. Nobody want to moan. And this is how he um, described or he uh, categorized these people. They were not cooperating. They don't want to get involved. And Jesus condemned that kind of behavior. Now he tells us in verse 33, Jesus is talking about John the Baptist. He said, for John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine. And you say he had a devil. So what this is saying here is that John the Baptist, when John the Baptist came, John the Baptist was not eating bread. In other words, he was not eating regular food like the ordinary people. We all know when you read in Matthew uh, chapter three, I think, somewhere around there, and other parts of the gospel, that John the Baptist, his meat was locust and wild honey. And John the Baptist wasn't eating the same kind of food that everybody else was eating in his time. And not only that John the Baptist was not eating regular food, John the Baptist wasn't socializing like everybody else in the community. When they have a baby dedication, you wasn't going to see John the Baptist in a baby dedication. When somebody have a wedding, John the Baptist not going to attend no wedding because he's not a social kind of guy. He don't mix with the community. When there is a funeral, John the Baptist is not going to come to your funeral. No, he's not that kind of guy. You know, you won't see John the Baptist, you know, invite John the Baptist and he come to your house to visit. That wasn't the kind of man John the Baptist was. He won't even invite you to where he lived because he's out in the desert. Uh, because he's not a social kind of guy. That is not who uh, John the Baptist was. He was a rough man. And he lived by himself. He lived out in the desert. According to what the Bible said, it seems as though just after he was born, he, I don't know if his parents passed away soon after because they were very old, you remember? John the Baptist, he grew up in the desert, in the wilderness, out there by himself. He wasn't a social kind of guy. So the, Jesus is saying here, John the Baptist, he wasn't eating and drinking. He wasn't your regular type of guy. And he wasn't eating and drinking wine. And ye say he had a devil. That John the Baptist boy, you know, he's crazy, you know. You see, he don't mix with nobody. He's by himself. He's a hermit. He's out there living in a cave. And they came to the conclusion that John the Baptist was demon-possessed. Because he wasn't involved with them. He wasn't going to their weddings. wasn't going to their funerals. He wasn't um, being invited to anything that was going on in the community. So they disassociate themselves from him. They said, he have a devil. He's demon-possessed. And this is the same people who John the Baptist used to preach to. Now, Jesus is taking it a little bit further in verse 34. The Son of Man is come, eating and drinking. Now, the Son of Man there is another name for the Lord Jesus Christ. I think that is the name that Jesus was identified more times by that name in the New Testament than any other name. The Son of Man, 
When you talk about the Son of Man, you're talking about the humanity of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're saying that Jesus, he was not just God. Jesus was a human being. And he was not just a human being. He was God. The Bible said that the, the Word of God became flesh and dwell among us, tabernacle among us. And we beheld his glory as of the only begotten Son of God, full of grace and truth. So here we see the Son of Man came, and he's not like John the Baptist. He was eating and drinking. <laughs> Jesus was eating regular food. And uh, not only that, he was drinking wine. He was going to um, weddings. You remember in uh, John chapter 2, he went to the wedding at Cana. And he turned water into wine. Anybody remember that? Jesus was going to weddings. Jesus was going to homes when he is invited to go to people's home. Jesus is even following funeral procession. Our last study, we saw where Jesus was in the procession uh, when this young boy was who died. And Jesus touched him and raised him back to life. Jesus was doing all the things that John the Baptist was not doing. But listen what they said. And they say, behold a gluttonous man. Gluttonous man. What are you saying? Jesus was licorice. You know that word licorice? Jesus was, <laughs> he just wanted to um, fill his belly up with food. Jesus, <laughs> he, was, he was, you know, hungry for food. And he was a licorice kind of guy. And this is what they're, they're saying about the Lord Jesus Christ. He's, a, he's craving for food. And he's a wine bibber. All he wants to do is to drink wine and eat food. And while making this accusation against Jesus, what they were thinking is that Jesus was calling for people to deny themselves. If any man will come up to me, let him deny himself. Pick up his cross and follow me. And what they were saying is that Jesus, he was calling for self-denial, but then he was involving in all of these things, eating and drinking, and he was be being merry, and you know, he was a happy man all over the place. Jesus was just having fun. This is what they were saying. And then they bring it, they said, a friend, a publican. Friend, a publican. You know the publican, he was the tax collector who was collecting taxes for the Roman government. And there were some of the hated people, most hated people in uh, Israel at that time because they were working for Rome and they were counted as traitors. Remember, Matthew was a publican and Jesus went to his house and had a, a dinner with him and the people. There was against Jesus because he went to the house of a publican. So Jesus, he was friends, a publican. And not only that, and sinners. Jesus was mixing with sinners. That is the kind of person Jesus is. Jesus loved the outcast. Jesus loved the person who is a sinner. Once you acknowledge your sin, the Bible said if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us away from all unrighteousness. He loved the sinner, but He hated the sin. Praise the name of the Lord. He has the remedy for sin. So they accused Jesus of being a wine bibber, and they say that he was a gluttonous man and friend of the publican and friend of sinners. But hear what the Bible said in verse 30, 35. But wisdom is justified of all her children. What this means is that Jesus is saying here that all of the people who listen to the words of John the Baptist. When John the Baptist preached to the people, repent, you know, and be converted. When he proclaimed to them that the Messiah was on his way and he called upon the people to bring forth fruit. Hallelujah. Those people who respond to the message of John the Baptist, they had a good result in their life. Jesus is saying here that they were justified. It, me it means that the word of God worked for those people. Those people who obeyed John the Baptist and they uh, repent of their sins, they were justified, they were made right with God. And also those people, the publicans and the sinners that listened to the, the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, they also was justified. And they were made right with God. 
And what Jesus is confirming here to us is that the word of God is going to work. If we obey the word of God, the word of God is going to work. Hallelujah. So shall my words be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not um, return unto me void, but it shall accomplish the things that I please. It shall prosper where to I have sent it. Brethren, we need to obey the word of God. Hallelujah. We need to subject ourselves to the word of God. The word of God that is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus continued. And in verse uh, 36, And one of the Pharisees desired him that he will eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. So here, <laughs> they just accused Jesus of being a gluttonous man and a wine bibber. And here, <laughs> one of the Pharisees, you know, <laughs> we don't know um, exactly what plans these Pharisees had. But he didn't have a good um, intention. You know, he invited Jesus to lunch, invite him for dinner at his house, but it seemed as though he didn't have any good intention. He didn't really love Jesus. He wanted to find a way to accuse Jesus of something. So what he did, they already said that Jesus liked to eat. <laughs> and Jesus liked to drink wine. So he decided that for me to find out a way to accuse him, it best I invite him for dinner or for lunch at my house. I might find some way to accuse him. Because he didn't really love Jesus. And we will find that out as we continue. The Bible tells us, praise God. One of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. So Jesus, not turning down the invitation from nobody. It doesn't matter who you are. You could be a Pharisee. You could be a Sadducee. You could be a sinner. You could be a, a proclaimed righteous person. It doesn't matter who you are. Once you want Jesus, Jesus is going to be there. And that is how Jesus is. Is whosoever will. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you were born. It doesn't matter your status in life. It doesn't matter who you are. Jesus. All for Jesus. Glory be to God. He will receive us with his arms wide open. And uh, here the Bible tells us that Jesus went to the house of the Pharisees. And what he did, he sat down to meet. And in those days, the way how they used to um, sit around a table to eat, they used to have those short tables, maybe, I don't know, maybe 18 inches high from the ground. Not like today, we sit on high table with high chairs. They will have a short table, low table, and they will sit down. And as they sit, they will, you know, wrap their, their feet around, and their feet will more or less come behind them or more or less on the side of them. You know, so they, they, they sit in a way that they make room for other people to sit down on the floor around this table. And this is what the Bible is saying here. Jesus, he sat down and he reclined, you know, I guess waiting for um, the food to be served or whatever uh, supposed to um, take place. And here in verse 37, and behold a woman in the city. So this was a city girl, which was a sinner. <laughs> Amen. This woman, she was from the city, and the Bible says she was a, a sinner. In other words, she was a known sinner. She wasn't doing anything in secret. She wasn't a hypocrite. You know, I like some things you, you, you could see about women. If a woman going to do something, she's not going to do it undercover. If she's going to do something bad, she will come out in the open, and she'll do whatever she wants to do in the open. She's not doing anything in no secret. You know, women, most women, not like us men. Most of us, we act in a kind of secretive kind of way. We act in a kind of hypocritical kind of way. But women, when they're going to do something, even with something bad, they tend to want to do it so that everybody could see them. And they, they're not acting like hypocrites. You know, uh, a few of us were talking about homosexual, homosexuality a while ago. And as I come to this part, talking about how men act in you know, in a hypocritical kind of way. There's so much men today in the church who is homosexual, and they're undercover. They live in their homosexual lifestyle, but they're undercover. This week I was watching a video with um, 
Joel Osteen. And Joel Osteen said he had many homosexual people in his church. And uh, the person was interviewing him, put him right on the spot. And they asked him if he is invited to go to a homosexual wedding. You know, he just thought, well, I don't know, you know, well, he said, well, you know, you know, if it's my friends, you know, yes, I will have to go. And what he's saying, Joel Osteen, it's, I'm not making this up. I know some of you love Joel Osteen more than you love me, so that's okay. <laughs> if you go on uh, YouTube and you look at uh, the, the, the video, the video is there. He said he had many homosexual people in his church. And if one of them... He didn't say all of them. I'm trying to um, repeat the words that he said. He didn't say every one of them. But he said if any of them that is his friends, they're getting married, he and his wife, they will go. Could you imagine that? A man of God going to a homosexual wedding. Amen. And we have so much people today who want to be compromisers. And uh, they don't want to be up front. Because they want to have certain people on their side. But here we see, as I was saying, this woman, she was a known sinner. And she wasn't compromising. She wasn't a hypocrite. Everybody knows she was a sinner. Now some people take it to, um, to mean, when the Bible says she was a sinner, and everybody knows about it. They take it to mean that she was a prostitute. The Bible didn't say that. But it seems as though whatever sin she was involved in, everybody know about it. <laughs> it wasn't any secret. And being this known sinner, the Bible tells us when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. Now the text don't really tell us this here. But even though everybody know this woman as this great sinner, it seems as though somewhere along the line, there is some kind of miracle that takes place in the heart of this woman. This great sinner that everybody see her as this great sinner. <laughs> Something, I don't know how, but it seems as though the words of Jesus seems to reach this woman. And this woman, she hears, she got the, the word that Jesus was going to be at the house of the Pharisees. Glory be to God. And if you notice, nobody didn't invite her. She wasn't invited. <laughs> oh, brother, sometimes you don't, don't wait for no invitation. Amen. <laughs> you don't have to wait for any, any invitation. Once Jesus is there, you are invited. And the Bible tells us that this woman, <laughs> even though she wasn't invited, glory be to God, she go out and she get a box. <laughs> she brought an alabaster box of ointment. Brethren, this was precious ointment. This was expensive ointment. And according to what they said about these, these alabaster jar, it was something that was sealed with this precious perfume in it. And it's not like how today we have bottles with corks and we could screw off the cork, take the cork off and pour something out and cover it back. An alabaster jar is something with a kind of a narrow neck and it's sealed. And once you want to open it, you've got to break it open, break off the top, and you can't cover it back. You have to use everything that was in it. You remember that woman uh, who anointed Jesus before his burial? He, she came with an alabaster box, and she break it, and she pour it upon Jesus. And there was so many people who comment. I think Judas one time said, Judas was upset. Because he said this thing could have been sold and given to the poor. But the Bible said he didn't have no intention to give anything to the poor. Because he was the man who was keeping the bag. And he was thinking about how much this thing worth. And how much he could get to put in his pocket. So this was something that was very valuable. And uh, this sinful woman, she was sparing no expense. Hallelujah. Amen. She go out and she get an alabaster jar of ointment, expensive perfume. This is not olive oil. This is not cheap oil. She come with expensive perfume. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. And the Bible said, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping. So as I told you, 
they recline at the table, and Jesus positioned his feet in a way so other people could sit uh, close to him, and his feet more or less swing around behind. So this woman, somehow she get in the Pharisee's house. I don't know who let her in because she wasn't invited. And she get behind Jesus, and she was weeping. This woman was in, she was sorrowful, she was grieving, she was mourning. And I think she was mourning over her sins. She was weeping, hallelujah, and began to wash his feet with her tears. So tears was flowing down, and here this woman was washing Jesus' feet with tears. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And did wipe them with the hair of her, her head. She wiping Jesus' feet with her hair. She let her hair down. Sometimes, you know, people get against women when they let their hair down in church. And they start to rejoice. And they start to dance. Or they start to run up and down. But brethren, sisterin, if you want to let your hair down for Jesus... Go ahead and let your hair down. <laughs> Don't make nobody stop you. <laughs> this woman was in the house of the Pharisee. And she wasn't invited. But she let her hair down. <laughs> and she was weeping. She took her hair. And she started to um, dry or wipe the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. And not only that, but she was kissing his feet. And anointing them with the ointment. You know, in that day, during that time, women wasn't allowed to do those things in, pu in public. It was, against, it was against society rule and laws for women to behave like that in public. Women come from a long way, you know. You guys don't know how far you come from. It was some years ago, women couldn't vote. Women, you guys, you, you don't know some of the privilege that you have today. It was, uh, <laughs> it, you know, it wasn't long ago, women couldn't drive. Women wasn't allowed to drive vehicles, even in some places, I think Saudi Arabia, women are allowed to drive cars. You'll see that those women have those young 12, 13, 14 year old um, boys who drive in their mother and their mother in the back seat. She's not allowed to drive. <laughs> Women, some years ago, women was not allowed to go in court and give uh, witness, give testimony. Women couldn't testify in church, in, uh, in, 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 in court. They was not allowed to testify in court because their, well, their, their testimony that they said was not reliable. Amen. Or if a woman wants to stand up and do something or say something, she has to get her husband permission. She has to get her husband permission. You, you guys saying, you know, Pastor Duncan is bossy. And Pastor Duncan, you know, do a lot, Sister Duncan. This. I know what some of you thinking sometimes. And sometimes you guys think as though, uh, the way sometimes I hear you guys talking as if, well, Sister Duncan is just like a little, you know, little thing under me. But it, I think you guys in for a shock. That woman that you see in there, she's not a little thing under me, you know. <laughs> My wife is not a little thing under me. <laughs> You know, in, in my home, <laughs> I am the head, but guess who is the neck? <laughs> my wife is the neck. You know, I up here with this big head. It's not going to go nowhere unless this little neck start turning the big head. And you guys sometimes think that she's this little thing under me and taking everything. No, it's not like that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I just want you to be aware of how far women came from. And you know, today when I see some pastors want to press women down and oppress them and say they're not supposed to preach and they're not supposed to um, pastor church and, you know, and all of these kind of things. You know, I, 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 I look at some of the things that go on in the Word of God and see the kind of privilege that Jesus gave to women. When Jesus was resurrected, none of those guys wasn't there, you know. Peter and them was hiding somewhere. <laughs> I don't know if Peter was under his, his mother's bed or wherever he was. Most of the disciples, they, they went and hide. Who you think was at the graveside? Even though Jesus wanted was to give the message of the cross to a man, there was no man there. They're gone. They take off and they're gone. 
And it was the women that the Lord Jesus gave the message. You know, so when I look at where women came from, brother, the, the struggles that they, 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 they undergo throughout all of history. Don't even talk about all of the abuse they suffer through slavery. Our women suffer so much through slavery. That's the reason why some of you don't they have a uh, clear complexion. I see some of you don't they have your complexion kind of clear. <laughs> it's, because, it's because of the suffering, <laughs> you know, suffering that our women went through. So we need to praise the Lord, man. We need to give God praise. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Came from a long way. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I know I won't be able to finish this today. It said um, <laughs> um, that the Lord, uh, in verse 37, Behold a woman in the city which uh, was a sinner when she knew that Jesus uh, sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wipe his feet with her tears. And... Uh, uh, with, her, with her tears and did wipe them with the, the, the hair of her head and kiss his feet. That's talking about reverence and honor and worship and anoint them with the ointment. I, 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 she don't care what those men, other men were saying. Maybe there was no other women there. I don't know. The Bible didn't talk about any other woman there, but she find herself there and she do what she knows she have to do to the Lord, she ministered to him. Glory to God. Now when the Pharisees, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he was a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this, uh, <laughs> woman this is that touched him. For she is a sinner. So here, uh, the Pharisee, being a Pharisee, he starts judging and he starts speaking within himself. And here we see one of the attri uh, attributes of the Lord Jesus Christ being God. Jesus knew and Jesus saw what he was thinking. And he read everything that was going on in his mind, in his heart. This man didn't say it out loud. He didn't whisper it. And you know, sometimes you hear people saying, Jesus never say he's God. Some people don't know their Bible. And people who say that Jesus never says he's God and Jesus wasn't God. You know, these simple little things you can look at. Um, if you have to judge somebody and say what you think they are thinking in their mind, the Bible talk against that. The Bible says you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to judge. And what Jesus was doing here, he was more or less judging this man. Why? Because he is God. And he knew what this man was thinking in his mind. You are not allowed to do that to anybody. I am not allowed to do that to anybody. But the reason why Jesus could have done that is because Jesus is God. He is who he said he is. He is the I am that I am. Saying, praise the name of the Lord. Hear what he's saying. This man, if he was a prophet, <laughs> would have known who and what man of woman this is that touched him. For she is a sinner. <laughs> Amen. This man, he, he, he know everything um, that was going on. And what he's saying here, if Jesus was a prophet, Jesus would have known that this woman was a sinner. Just like what we have him today. You know, maybe I will close there. There are some people in the church today who, they seem to know everything that's going on in other people's life. God give them the scoop and everything that's happening in, the, in other people's life. I want to tell you guys right now, I don't know nothing that is going on in your life. I don't have the scoop on whether you are living in sin or whether you are living a righteous life. I don't know. I don't have no scoop. God don't give me no scoop. I don't have no insight into the way how you live. I don't know if you um, to time in your husband or if you are to time in your, your wife. I don't know. I don't have any scoop on it. But there are some people who act as if, well, they know everything that is going on in other people's life. And that's okay. But the thing is, while they know everything that is going on in other people's life, their life is in a mess. 
and they don't know what's going on. I don't understand that. When you look at people like uh, Prophetess Juanita Baino, this woman, she's prophetess, and she has an answer for everybody. And her marriage fall apart right under her nose. And she never know what, what, what's going on. Pastor Chris knows everything about everybody else. Pastor Chris, marriage fall, fall apart right under his nose. Pastor Chris, as I said before, his wife, pretty like her money. And he still leave her and, you know, gone with somebody else. And he know everything that's going on in other people's life. This is what this Pharisee was doing here. And we today, we have to be careful. We have to be careful. I'm not saying God can give another person an insight into a situation that somebody else is facing. But if your life is messed up, you have to take care of your own life before you can take care of somebody's life. It's like what Jesus said. You have the beam in your eyes, but you can still see clearly to take out a moat, a little speck. That is in the eye of somebody else. He said, first, get rid of the moat, get rid of the, the beam, sorry, that is in your eye. Clean your own house before you can see clearly to clean somebody else's house. <laughs> Amen. You know, you go on all over the place and you're cleaning everybody else's house. You know, you're doing everybody else's house for nothing. But when somebody come by you, your house is in a mess. No, clean up your own house. That is what Jesus is saying. Brethren, we're going to pick up there another time. May the Lord bless us. Let us study the word of God, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little. And uh, the word of God is going to become a great blessing to us. I'm going to ask the musicians to come back as we sing a song. An eternal, most holy God. Father, God, we come before your wonderful throne of grace, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I will submit ourselves before your throne, yes, Lord. We Lord. give up. Jesus, we, appeal, we call upon you, Lord, yes. for your wonderful presence, O oh God, to be in our midst. Father God, that we obey exactly what you say to do. You say to lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover. Father God, you say sicknesses and diseases is not of you. So we put every matter into your hands in the name of Jesus. Sickness, we come against you now. We bind you and we uproot you in the name of Jesus. We come on the body to be healed from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Be healed. Be healed. In Jesus' mighty, powerful name. Lord, nothing can stand up before you. In the name of Jesus. We pull on every stronghold. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. We come against anything that is trying to put up against us. No weapon that form against the child of God shall prosper, but mighty to the pulling up strongholds. Father God, we thank you, God, for answering that wonderful prayer. Whatsoever it is in the name of Jesus Christ, we come against it now, and we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pronounce healing from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father God, we thank you so much, O oh God, for the wonderful privilege you give us to come before you boldly before the throne of grace and ask for mercy. And Father God, we believe. You say we, we don't walk by sight, but by faith in the name of Jesus. And we believe what you say in the name of Jesus Christ. We speak the word. And Lord, she is made whole in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father God, we thank you for answering that wonderful prayer in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answering that wonderful prayer. In Jesus' mighty, powerful name, I pray thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Marlene, right? In the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I present, oh God, Sister Marlene before you, Lord. God, whatever is going on Jesus. in her life, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. Lord, just like how you, you saw what was taking place in the heart of the Pharisee. I pray in the name of Jesus that Hallelujah. your eyes, the eyes of the Lord, run yes. it through and through. Yes, throughout the whole earth to show Holy himself strong. Yes. On the behalf of those whose hearts are perfect. Yes. Lord, whatever situation that is existing within the life of your daughter today, God, we pray yes. for your divine intervention. In the, name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, Jesus. glory be to God. Lord, Jesus. where it seems that her world is thrown upside down. God, I pray in Jesus' name. Oh, Jesus. God, Lord, Jesus. you will cause a change. Name of Jesus. You will cause a turnaround. Hallelujah. Lord, what yes, it seems God. man can't fix.
Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You can fix it, Amen. Lord. Amen. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, you have the answer. Jesus, yes. you have the answer. I God pray in the mighty Lord. name of Jesus, Lord. Every burden will be rolled away, yes. Lord. Yes. The weight, yes. oh God, that is upon Jesus. a shoulder will be lifted. Comfort, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, you will give her grace. Yes, Lord. You will give us strength, Lord. Jesus. God, where she might be weeping yes. like the woman that we just talked about. Yes, Lord. God, I pray in Jesus' name that yes. you will replace the weeping with joy. Her yes. sorrows yes. will turn yes. into joy. Yes. You will turn, oh God, her mourning into yes. dancing yes. in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, fill her up with joy and speakable yes. and full of glory. Lord, we pray, oh God, Lord, for divine healing. Jesus, who was wounded for our transgression, yes. bruised for our iniquity, chastisement of our peace was upon you. By your stripes we are healed. Reach forth your mighty hands, O God. Lord, we pray against every sickness and every disease. Lord, let your will be done. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, because healing is the children's bread. And, O God, you'll minister to her in the mighty name of Jesus. We praise you. God, we pray against family problems, O God. Whatever is broken within our family, in Jesus, the name of Jesus, Jesus, we pray for divine intervention. Yes, Lord. Glory be to God. Lord, anyone that is going astray, yes, anyone Lord. that is wayward today, yes, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, we come against waywardness. Jesus, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Glory be to God. Thank Hallelujah. You, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you. We thank, thank you. Lord. You are more than able to do exceedingly, thank abundantly, Lord. above all the things that we should ask or think by the power of God. Jesus that work it in us. Uh, God, I pray in Jesus' name, the wandering one, the wayward one, will come back in the name of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. God, you have done it before. We pray that you'll do it again. Do it again in the name of Jesus. Hallowed be your name. Glory be to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You are great and mighty. You are strong in battle. We bless your name. We praise your name. We glorify and lift up your name. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord. name of the Lord. Lord, we pray for Sister Lewis. Even as she prepared to travel to Grenada on her vacation, and at the same time to be with her mom, who is not well, in the name of Jesus, God, we pray that you'll guide her. You'll grant her a safe uh, passage down to Grenada, Lord, a safe flight. Lord, you'll use her as an instrument of righteousness. God, I pray that you'll send your holy angels before her. Yes. Lord, we diffuse every argument, every confusion, yes. every strife, every, oh God, thing that the enemy might plan in advance to mess up her vacation in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you'll go before her and clear the way yes. in the mighty name of Jesus and let her vacation, oh God, be a blessing to, oh God, Lord, folks in Grenada, in Granville, especially to her mom. Use her as an instrument of encouragement to her mom. Lord, I pray, oh God, for Sister Agnes. Lord, uh, even as she's at home, Lord, Lord, you know her condition. You know, oh God, the state that she's in. Lord, lay your hands upon her. God, you know her love for you. You know her heart. Minister to her in the name of Jesus. Release your anointing, Lord, upon her in a fresh and mighty way, Lord. I pray a fresh strength will come into her body. God, her back area that is aching, Lord, we put it before you, Lord. God, you are more than able. I pray, oh God, as a great physician, you minister to your daughter today, Lord. Thank you for divine health, divine healing. We give you the honor, we give you the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your son. Pray with all honor. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What's your name, sis? Dorothy. Sister Dorothy, in the name of Jesus, praise thank God. You, Hallelujah. Thank Glory you, be to Lord. God. You, Lord. Lord, we just want to thank you. Lord, uh, as the, the woman of the well came seeking for you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God, she was hungry. She was thirsty for water. You said, he that drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But if you drink of this water that I shall give unto you, you shall never thirst. Hallelujah. But the water shall be in you as a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. Lord, we present Sister Dorothy to you in the yes. mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Lord, we pray in Jesus' in name, Jesus name, oh God, that your power will yes, come upon Lord. her in a fresh and mighty yes. way, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
God, you shake up in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Lord, I pray that you'll awake up in a fresh and mighty way, Lord. Glory, hallelujah. The windows of heaven will be open and the blessings of God will be poured out upon your, your daughter today, Lord, in every situation, in every circumstances, oh God. Lord, whatever she might be facing today, Lord, whatever hard case she might be facing today, Lord, God, I thank you, oh God, that you can do it. You can remove the stone. You can remove the hindrance and the barriers and the walls and the partition in the mighty name of Jesus. We praise you, Father. We worship you. We glorify you, Lord. We magnify your name. We exalt your precious anointed name. Fill her cup today, Lord. Fill her cup, Lord Jesus. Let her cup be filled with the anointed oil in the name of Jesus, the anointed oil. God, let it fill her cup today in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We praise you and we glorify you, Lord. We magnify your name. We exalt your precious anointed name, Lord. You are more than able to do exceedingly abundantly, Lord. And we believe your words today in Jesus' precious, wonderful name. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Bless the Lord. Father, we praise you. We worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we give you praise. Yes, Lord. We give you honor. We give you glory. Thank you. Thank you.